Right now, Democrats and Republicans are fighting to find a compromise in a bill that would fund not only Israel and Ukraine, but it would also put an end to the U.S.-Mexico border crisis. This comes as a number of unauthorized immigrants have crossed the border, and now it's reaching new record highs in the backlog of cases when it comes to immigration court soaring past three million. We're breaking down the border bill in the big story today. In December, border authorities encountered more than 225,000 migrants along the U.S.-Mexico border. That makes it the highest monthly total recorded since the year 2000. According to data released by the, the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Home, Homeland Security, more than 11,700 migrant children are also in federal government custody at this time. That's a 6.5% jump since December 1st. There are people on the terrorist watch list that are apprehended all the time coming across the border. These are people who pay extra money not to be caught. The United States of America and the president do not know how many people have crossed the border illegally who are on the terrorist watch list and have never been seen. They do not know the imminent dangers that we may be facing. Senators and White House officials say they have negotiated a deal that would solve some of these problems. If it passes, the measures would amount to some of the most significant changes in U.S. immigration policy in decades. However, despite negotiations with the border security package on Capitol Hill, it could be dead as more Republicans come out against it. Former President Trump leading that charge, urging members to vote against the legislation. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. Today, House Republicans are moving forward with a vote to impeach the Homeland Security Secretary over his handling of the border. The moment is urgent. Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas must be impeached. Republicans say Mayorkas has willfully and systematically refused to enforce immigration laws, accusing him of making false statements to Congress that the border is secure. Democrats calling it a political stunt, a policy difference, not an impeachable offense that amounts to high crimes and misdemeanors. Now they want to impeach a man for not doing his job when you didn't give him the resources to do it. At the same time, support for the bipartisan Senate border security package starting to collapse. It's the most significant immigration deal reached by Senate Democrats and Republicans in more than a decade, but House Speaker Mike Johnson almost immediately shut it down, calling it dead on arrival in the House. They did not send us a border security measure. They didn't. They sent us a supplemental funding proposal that has immigration reform, but not real border security reform, and so that's why it's a non-starter. The bill includes $20 billion for border security, forcing the border to shut down when migrant apprehensions reach 5,000 a day. The package also adds $60 billion for Ukraine and $14 billion for Israel. But former President Trump's influence is clear as he urges Republicans to vote against it. It's a trap for Republicans that would be so stupid, so foolish to sign a bill like this. President Biden pushing back on Republican resistance. You don't have enough folks here. We need help. Why won't they give me the help? Secretary Mayorkas has rejected allegations accusing him of refusing to comply with immigration laws as baseless. If Republicans can get their way, he'll be the first cabinet member impeached in nearly 150 years. M1, ABC News, Washington. So let's break down this border bill a little bit more. At a time when problems at the border often grab headlines, this deal offers a rare list of proposed solutions with a bipartisan bent. One proposed change has to do with emergency border restrictions. The bill proposes once illegal boarding, border crossings reach a certain threshold, the Department of Homeland Security would be required to exercise a new emergency authority that stops migrants, except unaccompanied minors, from crossing the border. The authority would automatically kick in if crossings rise above 5,000 on average per day on a given week or 8,500 in one single day. If it passes, the only way migrants could seek asylum would be at the ports of entry where they have to schedule appointments using a government app. Right now, U.S. laws allow migrants to seek asylum no matter how they arrive to the U.S. There are also proposed changes to the way that migrants will obtain asylum. The bill proposes that the legal standard of proof for passing an initial screening will be higher, and those applying will also have to prove that they could not have moved to another part of their own country to avoid persecution. Now, those who pass the initial asylum screenings will immediately be eligible for work permits, and those who do not pass 
can appeal to an asylum review board. Currently, U.S. immigration courts largely decide the asylum cases, and the court system severely backlogged with more than 3 million cases pending today. If the bill passes, some immigrants will be given more protection from the United States. If it passes, Afghan evacuees who've been in limbo since 2021 would get a pathway to citizenship. Also, many documented dreamers who are brought legally to the U.S. as children of parents with visas would also find themselves becoming eligible for work permits and to remain as part of their family's applications for green cards after they turn 21. The bill would also provide federal dollars to fund legal representation in immigration court for unaccompanied minors under the age of 13. Now, despite all the bill will do, there's still a lot the bill will not help with. For instance, this bill will not shut down the border, as President Biden said it would do before its release. The bill will also preserve the president's authority to designate humanitarian parole on a case-by-case -case basis. Limiting this ability has been a key demand of some Republican senators during these negotiations. Officials cite multiple reasons for the latest surge here, including misinformation spread by smugglers, limited resources, and the rise of violence in home countries. Those immigrant survivors then come to the U.S. and face multiple obstacles before they get help. According to Domestic Shelters, an organization that's dedicated to helping survivors, it says that abusers in immigrant circles may take advantage of a survivor's desire to stay in the U.S. Afraid of deportation, many survivors stay silent, endure the violence, no matter how severe it becomes. At times, they often think that they have nowhere to turn. Here in Toledo, while it's not top of mind when it comes to migrants, there are plenty of people who are in the city who speak Spanish and are not fluent in English. If they're a victim of a crime, navigating the court system can be a challenge. We have Norma Ramos Prater with us, the coordinator of the Hispanic Latino Outreach Office with us under the Lucas County Prosecutor. So Norma, thanks for being here. Who are you serving? Thank you very much. I serve the Latino community. So I can either work in the family court in the yeah, I work in the family court. I go to the juvenile court, and I also assist in the municipal court. What are some of the services Sorry. that you offer? The services that I offer is, that I offer is uh, my main job is to help them through the legal process and to explain to them that regardless of the legal status in the United States, they have, that doesn't make a difference when they're victims or witnesses of a crime and to feel comfortable to come forward and report it. And why is that important? And how often do you have success stories where you're able to help these people who wind up being victims in some cases? Uh, why is it important to tell them that is because a lot of people uh, use that against them. Either uh, people that's working for somebody, there's a citizen, the citizens use their legal status to not pay them or to threat them or to sexually harass them. When they're uh, the wives, uh, the husband use that against them. And they're the only ones that can own and manage the finances in the home. So they can get out. They, there are some cases that just keep them in the house like maids. Okay, so you serve as that advocate and that voice to help them through this process? Yes, I also help in the school system to make sure that the children, uh, the parents know what their rights are as parents of the students. If somebody yeah. needs help, how if can they, they get connected? They can call me at 419-241-6816. Or they can come in person at 1222 Broadway, Toledo, Ohio, 43609. Well, Norma, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Remember, you can watch the entire big story here on Action News at 4 by downloading the 13 Action News app. It's available for free in your phone's app store.